Hello and welcome to a new video about my barbecue controller. Now that I have found out that my ADC is working pretty well, I want to try it to calibrate the temperature because I really don't know what temperature means which ADC value. Right? So this is what I'm going to try. I have this ADC. Yeah? I have here plus 5 volts. I will take this plus 5 volts. And I will connect them to, to here, that's clear, to my ADC. Then I have the ground, uh, I'll take the ground as well. I will connect this to ground. And of course SCL to each other and SCD. Uh, And here, up here, I want to use here between, between plus, from plus, I will use, uh, 47 kilo ohms, uh, then I will use here my, and here, I will connect to here. All right. So this is my this is my heat probe, my damp probe. My temperature probe, uh, for the seven kilo ohms. Uh, here I have I have already soldered here a little bit. Yeah. So here's the here's the temperature. The temperature probe and I have soldered here a little bit and those two, the yellow and the orange line, uh, those two lines, they are the same uh, because it's actually a stereo, uh, stereo connector. But here we only have two. Yeah? So we have here, we have green and the other pole. All right. So this is what I'm, what I'm going to use here. Huh? And instead of going directly to A0, I will use here a 1K. Resistor and then go into and here I will use a 100 nanofarad capacitor. So this is a, a high, a, a low pass so that I can, here's the capacitor. Yeah. Here's one of them is the, the 74K, one of them is the 1K, hmm? and this should filter noise, right? High frequency noise will be, will be drained by this capacitor. Yeah? That's it. Yeah? And I want to see what values, what ADC values I've got for other temperatures. Since I don't know the temperature, I am going to use here my this device, this DS18P20 temperature sensor with the one wire bus. What already proved itself, not particularly this element, but several other elements, to be quite accurate. Huh? So I am going to use here. Uh, one data line which is going to two input two and then i have a plus and a minus and in here i will have between plus and data line I will use a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor uh, and here I have this DS18P20 temperature sensor 
I'm reading both values in, I'll print both values out and actually then I should be able to calibrate my temperature probe, okay, to get the correct ADC value to the correct temperature. There's only one, one thing, this uh, Dallas DS 18P20, they only work up to 127 degrees. So I will use a cup, a nice, here is a water heater, and I will use a nice cup of hot water, huh? nice cup of hot water to be at least close to 100 degree and let it cool off so that we can calibrate the area between zero and between zero and and uh, 100 degree or almost 100 degree above I will I'm going to use here my barbecue thermometer huh? so that I have oh this is working up to 300 degree and I will use my stove huh? down there to put this in. I will also protocol how this is behaving compared to the temperature sensor at least between 0 and 100 degree or 20 and 100 degree so that I know how accurate this is. Yeah? And then we will have some lines. right? So now I will prepare this. Huh? Let's prepare the hardware. Okay, prepare the hardware. So I will not rewire this plus and minus. I will go, I will have plus and minus wire to here. Plus and minus. So I have to power supply here this device from plus and minus. Good, then starting from plus, we need my F4. Where have I put this? Here, here. Starting from plus, I need a 4, 47K from plus to here. Here, I'm going to use my temperature sensor with the connection. So here actually we are the green line. Is this correct from plus to minus? Here we have a high voltage tie, so we should be... I, w I, I will turn it. I will use here from minus to plus and those from plus to minus the temperature sensor from plus to minus because then I have a rising the higher because the, 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 the resistance of this temperature sensor is getting lower eh? it's getting lower so I will exchange simply those two I will change exchange the 74k which will go to zero because if this is a high value then we will have almost nothing yeah? And the smaller this get, the higher this value will get. All right, so here. So this is my, my measurement I want to have. So I only have to connect this to, to A0. Ah, no, 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 no. Then we have the low pass. Oopsie, oopsie, oopsie. Then we have the low pass filter, right? So we have here the 1K, then we have here the 100 nano, the 100 nano will go to ground, alright, 100 nano is to ground, and here is now my 
A0. Alright. And now my A0. Yo. Good. So now I should already measure something. Well, let's try. Let's try. Connect this here. Ooh, a lot of cables. Connect this here. Bidim. Switch to the computer. And we should find values. Analog value 1, 2. Okay. Whatever this means now. If I'm touching this, hopefully I get higher values. Minus. Nothing much is changing, right? Ah, no. Alright, it's growing, value is growing. And now I let it go. Hopefully it's dropping again. Seems that way. Good. This is working. This is working. Now I only have to add the reference. Temperature. Here is my 18p20 temperature sensor. So I will use pin number 2 I've said. So from pin number 2 I will go to somewhere on my board. Yeah. Then I have plus and minus, of course. Minus, plus. Between plus and data line, I will use the 4K7, which I also just had in my hands. Okay. Too close. 4K7 between plus and data lines, so I pull up resistor, and then I'm going to connect here DS18B20 plus data and minus. Alright. So actually we should receive, we should program now, we are programming our 18P20. Okay. Let's see, meanwhile we have A. I have my own, my own uh, library written for that. A library, temperatures, we use this, and I'm going to use temp sensors, temp sensor. I have to, what do I have to give? I think the pin number, wire pin, yes, wire. Then we have resolution, 12 bit, and the debug board must should be serial. Okay. Now I also have to a long value temperature. I will read this temperature equals temp sensors dot get temperature from index zero. This is easy because I only have one temperature sensor, so it can only be index zero. And here I will write zero dot print temperature. Ah, this is, I have to 
convert this to float and divide it by 100 because actually it's it's written it's with two comma values yeah. and now here I just write the ADC value in bracket all right so that's it I think this should be it let's upload this and see if we're getting temperatures from our from my from my ds 18 p 20 which is here 23 23.18 touch it yes growing and if i now put both tensors in the same cup of water hot water i am going i can calibrate this hopefully since i see the values mm -hmm. so prepare a nice cup of water okay so the water is hot so i put in my pro uh, my temperature pro i put in my reference temperature pro and i also put in my second reference temperature pro which is here my my uh, professional device and now i will pour in the hot water this is already beeping <laughs> increase the alarm all right so actually this shows i've also prepared I've also prepared an Excel sheet. So I have my DS18P20, which is 85, I would say. We had an ADC value of 100. And here we are showing 85 degree. We so right now grilling thermometer shows 85 degree. We show here 80 and we have 116 ADC value. I will keep this up. Alright, so see this the, the, the orange line, the orange line is my grill thermometer. It's working pretty nice. Uh, the only thing the hotter the temperature is getting, the more the more actually I have a difference. Here I have five degree difference, here I have four, here I have four, here I have three, and it's dropping. It's dropping. Maybe this is a trend, I don't know. Yeah? This is the temperatures which I trust most. And these are the ADC values. This is the blue line and you see the typical non-linear behavior of a negative temperature coefficient uh, stuff you see there. Uh, this, is, this is how this looks like. I honestly am not sure if this... if this uh, 47K resistance is suitable. I will try the same with the 100k resistor. However, I will not do this here in the water. I will do this in the in this in the oven. Okay? I will put all the stuff, not the electronics, but the sensors in the oven, close the lid and then I will use different temperatures. I can adjust it in the oven different different it's regulating itself. At least they think uh, say, yeah, at least they say so I will use my laptop and print those stuff out and then we will see how this calibration curve looks like with uh, 47k and 100k all right so we'll go down to the oven and make this so i did a lot of measurements all right i 
stayed up quite long in the evening, burning the midnight oil. And, well, at first I was pretty satisfied. First I was pretty satisfied, because actually what I've got, look at that, those are different different recordings. The blue line is the one we've started here with this cup of hot water and so on. Uh, this was one. Uh, so I've seen we started at almost zero and we ended up here at a maximum value, ADC value of 8300. I thought, hey, this is not good. Uh, this is not good. Uh, so I changed. I changed the, the resistor and thought, okay, if 47K is not good enough, then let's try a, try a higher one. And I tried 100K, 100,000 ohms. Then I received the blue line, uh, the, the, the orange line. Yeah? The orange line started at 27,500. Uh, so, I thought it's okay, yeah, and then I was going down with the temperature again, and at then I've seen okay, this does not look great either because here the, the dotted lines are always the the change rate in digits per per degree Celsius. Here we have around 200 digits by uh, by uh, per Celsius degree Celsius. And here I'm dropping to really low values of maybe one or two. Yeah. This is not. This is. This was not good enough. Yeah. So I thought also 100,000 is not good. So I tried something between 47k and 100,000. So I tried 10k and 47k in series. So 57k. I thought. Yeah. And then this was the green line. And the green line looked promising. Thought, oh, that's it. This I want to have. Yeah, I'm starting at 50 degree as a reasonable steepness, so I have a good change rate and so on. Yeah, and this is exactly in the area where I want to have a good change rate. It is not very constant, but hey, all right. And then I wanted to calculate. I wanted to calculate the values, the resistance values. So this cannot be a problem yeah, because of a voltage divider. So I'm going to calculate the resistance. And I had here 47,000 ohms. Yeah. And this is what I, I've got. Yeah. The blue line, this was the resistance going up to, I don't know, mega ohms. Yeah. Pooh, this is cannot, this cannot be. Yeah. And I suspected I mean, it was pretty late then already. Yeah, I suspected a lot of things. Burning the midnight oil. If you are tired, go to sleep. There will not be a... I suspected, uh, you know, parasitic capacities and, and stuff. I suspected the oven. Yeah, that this is issuing somehow some electromagnetic wave and... I, weirdest thoughts. Yeah? At two in the morning. <laughs> and next day, after a good night's sleep, yeah, not too long, but long enough it seems, I realized my mistake. Because I was not using a 47k resistor, I was using a 47 ohm resistor. I even measured it. I even measured it. But I not seen on my measurement device that it's not written K there. It was written 47 ohm and I always read 47 kilo ohm, K ohm, but this K I have not. So after I changed this here in my table and all my, my calculations and so on, and suddenly I got those. Huh? Those and it looks like all are matching now. So this really seems to be the resistance. Of course, we're a little bit off uh, because sometimes, you know, wherever it's steep, 
I think I can trust it. Wherever we have really low values or really no changing values, then one digit is already quite a change. So here below, I more trust the, the uh, green line. Here above, I more trust the, the, uh, the blue line. Yeah, so I, between blue and... Actually, they are not too far off. So I was satisfied. And what I also did then, I was doing the average of all those. Yeah? Average value, it's here. This is the average, the average resistance. With those average values, I now also have, can have a look. So if I write in here 1000 ohms, yeah, we are almost there at the 1000 ohm line. Yeah? So actually, what I want to do is find a good value, you see the 1000 ohms, this looks pretty promising. Yeah? I want to find a good value for a promising. Yeah? And if I'm using 4K7, 4700 ohms, I think I can reach a behavior like that. Mm -hmm. So and this looks really promising because here I'm always above, here I'm a little bit below, but anyway, I would not need this peak is simply too high. Yeah, I think 4.7k is a suitable line for 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 the second resistor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this below. Uh, I'm going to measure this uh, with my oven still uh, again and see if I'm really matching with 4.7k, if I'm really matching this, this forecasted line. Okay, and then I think I will use this forecasted line, and then I think I'm there. Huh? Then I have my calibration curve, finally. All right, so I meanwhile verified the curve. It is not entirely true. But at least the black one, this line now, is the one I'm using. So I'm using my 4K7 ohm resistor. And this is the curve. And here I have my calibration. So I have for each temperature now, for each temperature from 23 to 250 degrees Celsius, I have a corresponding ADC value I want to use. Okay. And a corresponding corresponding resistance. I think it should be should be nice. And if you have a look at the steepness, this is the steepness curve. Yeah, this is exactly where we want to have it pretty high. So up to uh, it is high. 200 above 200 digits per per uh, degree Celsius. So it's what is, what is this causing? Uh, 100, 1 degree Celsius divided by 200. So resolution of 0 0.005 degrees Celsius. I'm sure this is below noise. Huh? All right. Whew, this was some work for me. But now I have really good overview about this, this combination. Okay. Now I need to, to get this into my program. I'll start a new program to read this in. And I have to get this into my program, this calibration curve, so that we can directly derive from the ADC value the temperature. And then we will display this at first in the, in the serial monitor. Right. That's it for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.